She is just tanking up so much damage. Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Bam! We got Koku on the account. Brand new account, uh, brand new champion for me. And what a great champion we've got here, Koku. Probably top three tank in the game for me. I think she's, I think she's got a fantastic kit. So I think there's three different things which she can do extremely well. She can be your clan boss champion that protects your team. I'll show you a clan boss team that this works with really well. She's a bit fiddly to tune into clan boss, but I'll show you a team that does work. She could be your AoE HP burner. And anywhere late game, HP burn is where it's at. If you're talking Hydra, if you're talking um, any of the kind of Doom Tower waves, some of the Doom Tower bosses, late game Spider, late game um, Ice Golem. Like there's so many places where HP burn becomes absolutely the best thing you can drop. And she does it on her A2. And we'll get to that in a minute. And then the third thing you can do with her, and I think it's probably her best spot, is place her in a go second arena team. And I feel like she is probably one of the best champions in the game to do this. And you can do it, by the way, totally unbooked. She can do the same job in that type of setup, totally unbooked, as she could do booked. So let's talk about a kit quickly. Koku, A1. She's got a weaken on the A1. It's a single target unless there's a bunch of debuffs out there, in which case she hits four times. Each hit, if you book her, 50% chance of placing a weaken. I'll tell you what, weaken's on. Tick, weakens on. Very, very nice A1. A2 then. AoE decrease attack champion. If someone else has already placed a burn for you, it's also an AoE HP burn um, champion. And I'll test this a little bit today just to make sure that I'm right with that, but pretty sure that's the way it goes down. A3 then. Ally protection for your team. Goes on for two turns. Um, and she does this every four turns, but because she gets an extra turn, it's the equivalent of doing every three turns. She also puts block damage on herself for three turns. So she's always got block damage on while she's doing ally protection. She's protecting 50% of your damage while she's taking none. Insane. Um, and then she's got this very cool passive. So every time this champion is hit with a crit, heals all allies by 15% of their max HP then places increased defense on all allies. Now, the, the thing with this is turn order makes quite a big difference here. If she's at the front of your team, she'll spread the increased defense before they've taken any damage. If she's at the back of your team, she'll heal after they've taken damage and then place the increased defense. So you need to understand what are you using her for. If you're trying to make sure that you don't get one shot in an arena team, she needs to be at the front. If you're trying to make sure that she gives a nice juicy heal and then gives them an increased defense buff, then she needs to be at the back. Yeah, it makes quite a big difference. Also worth saying here that most PvE content, almost all of it, the enemies only have 15% crit rate. So you're not going to be crit a lot in Doom Tower Waves, in Clan Boss, in any of the PvE stuff. You won't be crit a lot. So this actually doesn't sink in very often in PvE stuff. It should, however, sink in 100% of the time when it's PvP stuff. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to show you PvE, then we're going to jump onto PvP at the end of the video. So Masteries for PvE, I think this is a pretty good set. Basically, we're going Giant Slayer because our A1 becomes a quad hit. Uh, we've gone for a general kind of clan boss type of setup with offense and, and defense. You can definitely take Support Tree if you want to land things like Decrease Attack and the burns for more turns. Um, so it just depends how you want to use it, where you want to use it. But this is quite a nice clan boss and general kind of build. Uh, and we'll show you, once I change it later, a more tanky build, which you still could use basically in all content. Um, you just won't get any damage out from like Giant Slayer hits. So this is more like a clan boss stroke PVE. And then we'll show you a tank build right at the end okay then so this is the build i'm going to go for it's a two for one speed comp which means that everyone once we get to turn six everyone goes twice for every time the clan boss goes this means it will get a ton more hits it also means that kayuku is going to have ally protection and block damage up for all of the aoe hits 
and for the slam um basically means that it is an incredibly strong comp uh, in terms of setup but it's quite hard to do and kaiku's extra turn mechanic is actually making it quite difficult to just get these speed tunes done on a like two for one basis on a one for one much easier but for a two for one and that's where most of your damage will come from uh it's quite tough which does mean there's one champion here with a high speed so we've got a deep lead giving us a 19 percent speed aura 227 speed we've got a god seeker it's a fast one 279 speed um i've then got iron brago in he could be anyone that does decrease attack, by the way. I just felt like he would be a good uh, good champion in this spot. 253 speed. Koku's at 252. And then I've bought in Bad El Kazar for the cleanse at 209. But could be anyone that does either block debuffs and fills the spot or anyone who can cleanse on like the first turn. So that's the, that's the comp. I built them with decent damage and all that type of stuff. Look, I built them well. So this is pretty much like as well as they can do with my leftover gear uh, and it'll give you an indication of of whether you feel like it's strong enough to to kind of deal with what you want it to do anything good in the chests no oh little piece of candy okay here we go so deke in the lead we've got koku in second spot to do our ally protection and yeah we want to make sure that we don't use deacon's a3 until after the first stun so we're going to go just A2 here, A3 with Iron Brago, get decreased attack on. Actually didn't land, pretty bad luck. A2 with Kaoku, get decreased attack on. We've got a burn on instead. Um, we've got then A2 with Deke, which is our drop defense move. Uh, cleanse and heal from Bad L, also some poisons going on. Then we're just going to go A1, A1. A1, 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 A1. <laughs> I was like, hold on a minute, there's an extra one. A2 from Brago here to give us our increased defense. Take a hit back. We're then going to go for our A3 ability, followed by our A1. Deeks A1. A2 here to start to extend the buff. See that? Extend the buff ability. A1 from Bad L, A3 from Brago, A2 from Kaoku. We take a stun, that's fine for this, this rotation. He just skips a turn here. And then from here on in, it is full auto. So, and you see there, we start to get the weaken out from the A1, the extra hits coming in from Kaoku. We should see now from this turn onwards we start to get the um, ally protection up along with the block damage let's just see what this does basically i mean it's a tickle on everyone and she takes nothing it's absolutely nuts if you get this working tickle on everyone else absolutely no damage on kaiuku obviously she does a lot of damage from her a1 as well she takes a stun it's fine because we're going to get a cleanse here She's actually a good stun target for me as well, so I don't mind that at all. And then basically for every hit other than the clan boss slam, we're going to have ally protection up. So for every single clan boss slam, like AoE hit, we've got ally protection on, which means Koku's taking zero damage and these guys are taking minimal damage. So it should mean that this comp can last really as long as we can withstand the hits from the slams. What I'll show you, I'll, I'll get this on to maybe turn count 30 or so, and you can just see the sort of damage we are or are not taking from these hits. Um, so she's putting her burn out here as well, which is a bit of extra juicy damage, honestly. It's quite nice. We've got poison damage coming from Bad L, and then we get some pretty big hits from our God Seeker and from our Brago to do extra damage to this comp. So we're already on about a million per turn um, damage ramp up so far. And it's quite early on. I'm going to play it through. And uh, I'll bring you back in a bit later on. Okay, I'm going to bring you back in. We're on turn count 30. We're starting to take quite a lot of damage from the stun hit. And maybe I should have speed tuned it so that increased defense was up for that stun hit. Uh, might have been better. But look at the A1 damage. We've got basically a 200k plus whatever giant slayer procs we get. About a 300k A1 hit 
coming in from Kyuku here. Also, whenever any of these slams are coming in, look at the 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 kind of ability to just withstand the damage we've got coming in from this team. I mean, it's pretty much like so much of that damage is being eaten away, and she's taking zero damage from that block buff, uh, block damage buff being out there. So it is incredibly strong, incredibly strong. I feel like. We need some more big brains to get behind Kayuku comps. Because they're not easy to build. But I tell you now, it's it's one of the best ally protect tanks we've got in the game right here. Definitely. She just needs a bit more fine-tuning with her builds. And we will see some crazy, crazy numbers coming out of her. But as it is, this is going to be a, a kind of comfortable, well, beyond comfortable two-key team. And we might just about struggle to do a one-key because she's tanking these stuns without any sort of increased defense buff up. I'll let it continue to the end, but yeah, the damage from Array 1 is substantial to the point where I'm thinking, maybe we should just be switching off that A2 if you've got a, a consistent um, decreased attack champion already on your squad, because the A1 is doing like substantial damage with this build. I'll show you her build after. But yeah, we're probably about to finish up the run now. So I'll let it run through to the end, show you the final damage numbers. And then uh, I'll show you some other content as well. So there we go. We did about 60 million in damage. Off that, Kyuku did more damage than Iron Brago. That's actually nuts. Iron Brago is known for being a hard hitting champion. Kyuku's A1 is pulling through some silly, silly numbers. Turn off the A2. Let's get a go in A1. That is an insane number there. 16.5 million damage. From the champion that was also protecting the team through the whole run. In terms of subs then, I'm sure people are going to ask. Deke in this comp could be a seeker, but you kind of need Deke for make this, to make this work. In terms of the speed tune that I've done here. You do need a buff extender. I'm using Godseeker to use Hellborn Sprite or a whole bunch of others, but Godseeker is decent. Bad L is just in there for the cleanse. So anybody that was doing block debuffs might be better. Or um or a different cleanser on their ability on a free turn. And then Iron Brad goes mainly in there for his decrease attack ability, but he also brings increased defense for me in this one. So the comp here works nicely, but yeah, damn, 16.5 mil from Kayuku against Clan Boss. That is a massive, massive number. And that A1 was absolutely stomping his way in there. Nice. I guess the, the funny thing with this build as well, so we've gone. You know, 4k defense, it's not like an obscene number. We do have a lot of crit damage, 226, but again, not obscene. Good amount of accuracy, and she was fast, like 252 speed. So she was fast to make that, that kind of build work. So yeah, she can hit. Actually, the AoE does hit, and her A1 hits hard. So just kind of be aware of that she's got good multipliers. Now, I just want to try something here, because I thought her... Just looking at what happened on, on um, Plan Boss there... I might have misunderstood what her A2 does now. And I'm sure it was meant to be changed so that she straight up won't do a burn if there's not a deep... She, there needs to be a decrease attack ability out there before her burn becomes a burn. So let's just see what happens here. I won't do her on auto because she'll probably do her A2, I'd imagine. But let's just see. A1... Uh, sorry, her A2... Does it do decrease attack or does it do a burn? Attacks all enemies. 80% book to 100 chance of placing decrease attack. After attacking, 80% chance goes up to 100 of doing a burn on all enemies that this skill did not place decrease attack on. So the idea is if someone else places decrease attack, it becomes a burn. If not, it's a decrease attack. Okay, so that's working right. It di I didn't feel like it was working right on Clan Boss. So if she's not placing... Or so if, if there's no decrease attack out there, it becomes a decrease attack. If someone else does decrease attack for her... Uh, who have I got that's quick enough? Okay, so Stagnite is quick enough to go before she is. Stag will do decrease defense and a decrease attack. I guess Koyuku, you just need to be aware... Like, if you build her for damage, then... You know she will hit pretty hard a bit like ignatius her aoe hits hard so you don't want to blow the spiderlings up but you see here we've got decrease attack on what well, most of them so if we then go with her a2 now 
Anywhere where there was a decreased attack, we should see a burn, basically, yeah. Anywhere else, it just became a decrease attack. Yeah, so that's how her ability works. It does make her super good and, and really versatile. You just need to play around that mechanic. And obviously, she does this crazy thing where it's like, you know what? I'm, I'm your target. And also, by the way, uh, I'm not going to take any damage. Obviously, if there's a block damage on someone, then they'll go and fight somebody else. But the burn is awesome for any end game content. Like, burns are where it's at. Hydra, Doom Tower bosses, any boss burns are where it's at for doing damage. So she's, she's going to be really comfortable to put into teams. And because she gets her abilities back so quick, damn, she's going to be really useful to use for, for pretty much any end game um, content as both a damage dealer and as an absolute tank. So yeah, absolutely crazy kit. Crazy kit, probably one of the best tanks in the game for me. I just think it's like such a good kit to be able to just get in there and get the job done. I mean, look at this. Imagine building a really slow. Imagine her building a really slow so that she's just blocking all of the damage whilst also just burning stuff up. I mean, yeah. The, the potential is endless in terms of what she can get done, honestly. So crazy. So that's, that's her kind of in... That, that's how I would see her in a PvE role. Great clan boss champion if you can speed tuner. Crazy burner. Stroke. Absolute awesome team tank for other PvE content. Let's see what she's like in the arena. Yeah, so I think for the arena, I mean, you can go with your standard sets. Things like Swift Parry set is gonna be good. Things like just general like Stalwart gear, Stone Skin, obviously. Um, you know, all of those kind of normal sets are gonna be really strong, but I'm just wondering if Frenzy could be really strong here. We want her to get a turn. We want her to get her, her block damage and ally protect out to protect your team, but, we also just know that her passive will kick in as soon as we take a hit. So we can either use her as an increased defense spread or we can use her as kind of back of the line. We expect to survive the hit and we heal off of that. So in terms of masteries, I'm going for you know, like tank build, um, you know, resistance. We're going for bulwark to take damage away from our team. We're going for selfless defender to do the same job. We're going for cycle of revenge to get turn meter when our team take a hit to kind of come online with frenzy as well um, and the idea here really is that she soaks up as much as possible in terms of damage from your team and then she allows your damage dealers to take a turn so yeah look, up against a, a kind of pretty standard offensive team i've got somebody in a shield set could literally be anybody she's in here to spread increased defense across our team and try and give us a chance to stay alive your damage dealer would be much better if it's a defense based champion like in fact, I could throw, I think my Tormund is built, let me just see. I think my Tormund is built for damage. Yeah, kind of. So I could throw Tormund in here as my damage dealer instead of like a Trunda. But any damage dealer could fill this spot. And then we've got kind of like a shield protected by Brogni. And hopefully it might reflect a bit of damage back to them. But the idea is you get a turn when you shouldn't. Yeah, so it's not just about the speed race here. Uh, and obviously, I mean... He does even better work because he actually cuts in. But if we do take a hit, which we should. We've actually got the ally protection out already. This is, this is working even better because my Tormund's done a load of work up front. But when we do take a hit, see we've got increased defense now spread across our team because we took a critical hit. Therefore, my Tormund does even more work and we're much harder to kill. Incredibly difficult to kill. She is just tanking up so much damage with this um, this mastery set and this kind of setup. So yeah, it, I mean, it can be, it's not always an easy thing to do, by the way. You can still get one shot. It, you know, it's still possible to one shot you, but it's much harder to one shot you when you've got a team like this. I know I'm down low. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, let's see this here. Uh, Anti-Hedgy. If Hedgy's built with any crits, then... Again, it should be the same sort of thing. As soon as you get hit by the hedgy, you should get a load of turn meter fill. Let's slow it down a minute. Did we get crit? Yes, we did. Increased defense everywhere. She gets her frenzy away. Gets a bit of a turn meter boost. And then away she goes. Protects the team. We've got increased defense from the big boy. And he's going to slam someone into the dirt. And she also hits. Considering 
she's no longer in a damage build i mean she hits hard you could easily easily build her in a damage type of setup as well i don't know if we're going to beat like a big trunder with madame this is this is still nasty because she's going to put the decreased defense on you she's going to kind of clean stuff off but we'll see let's have a look let's have a look is it enough to block you know the the awful offenses that we face oh, trunder gets to freeze harsh now it's difficult to beat us with a decreased attack on her So we get the increased defense across the board. Tormund starts going bonkers and absolutely slays. Damn, this is actually a fun team. <laughs> there you go. Look, I mean, I think she is a great, versatile champion, can play all over the place in terms of spots. She can come into teams all over the place. For me, one of the best tanks in the game with a really cool kit. There you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. That's Kayuku. I will see you later. Go on. Slam him, Tormund. Slam him. Kill him. Get them, dude. Just gonna do it. <laughs> anyway, see you later.